Hey guys, what's going on? Today we are trying something new. As you can see, I'm starting with some really, really rough silhouettes looking for a pose. And that's because we are trying a new series called Just Draw and Just Paint, where the idea is you just make some time for yourself to draw and paint, right? It doesn't have to be complicated, it doesn't have to be perfect. It can be whatever you want it to be, but the idea is can we get something down on the page and can we develop it into something that's more or less finished? And so for me, uh, because I'm quite busy, I don't have a lot of time to do this kind of stuff. I've committed to doing this at least once a week um, so that I can work on my own stuff, right? Even if it's not the best stuff in the world, at least I can work on my own stuff. So when I'm not helping my mentees or working on a job, this is the kind of stuff I like to do is just jump in and paint and draw something. Um, and for me, the hardest process of getting started is the ideation process. So what I've done is I've used uh, a bunch of AI and other generators to come up with ideas for me so that I don't have to think about what I'm going to be drawing. I can just come up with how I'm going to be drawing it. And sometimes outsourcing decision making like that is pretty cool, right? It allows us to get started faster, which is something I really believe in. It's, it's so hard to get started when you're doing drawing that any way to get you doing that process faster is totally worth it in my opinion. So here you can see I've just got a brief at the top left of the page. I'll probably repeat this idea every single time I do this or do one of these videos uh, so that you guys can see exactly what I'm working with. And just full disclosure, I have a bunch of reference on my other monitor as I'm plotting these characters out and as I'm drawing. So everything you see me do is a lot easier because decision making has also been taken care of by my reference, right? If I look at a pair of pants that I like, I might introduce that into the character. If I see a pose I like, I might do that too. So I'm using uh, Pure Ref because it's a really cool uh, piece of software. It allows you to see a whole bunch of reference on a single file and you can, you know, perfectly organize it. It's really, really awesome. I recommend you guys, if you're not using it, go download it. It's free. I think it's free. I think it's free. Yeah. And uh, go use it. It's very, very cool. So I'm going to bang out a couple silhouettes here and then I'm going to pick one out uh, at pretty much at random, at whatever one I'm feeling for. And then I will develop that into a character that will start with a simple costume design, uh, some face design, all that kind of stuff. And then we'll refine it in the final pass for presentation. OK, so um, today I also wanted to chat to you guys about two things that came up in my school this month. Um, they're essentially these thought ideas that, that young aspiring artists have that I often cringe around. And so I figure that if I'm here and you guys are watching me, it might be worth me spreading the news and spreading my opinions about it because it might help the way you guys think about it. And it's kind of ironic because one of them has to do with authority. And I'm being very careful always when I make these videos because I realize that I could easily slip into one of those people that you guys just listen to and take at face value as the absolute truth. And I, it couldn't be further from, from, from that, right? It's, it's part of what I'm going to talk about today. So let's just ju jump right into it. So first thing that came up was this idea that if I'm working on my art as an aspiring artist and I run into a wall and I learn how to overcome that wall, by studying a course, some methods, all that kind of stuff, and then I implement it into my own work. If it's not working, or if I take a step back in doing so, then perhaps I shouldn't be doing art at all. I know it sounds quite extreme, but I have heard this kind of thing from aspiring artists who just get so demoralized from moving backwards that they want to give up. And if it's not giving up, it's at least being demoralized to the point of procrastination or you know perfectionism paralysis all of those typical um, bad um, art output zones, right? And so what does that mean? That means that typically speaking, artists expect at an early stage that their art progression will always be linear. It will always move up towards the top right corner. You'll always be improving. You won't ever get worse. Wow. Okay, that's quite an expectation. What if I told you guys that's not true? What if I said... I think from what I've seen and what I've also experienced that it takes a while for knowledge to be integrated, right? It, it means you have to put in the reps, practicing those ideas before those ideas start to manifest in your work and start to improve in your work. Expecting something to work the first time is kind of crazy. Imagine like all science everywhere, all innovation everywhere was try it once if it doesn't work, give up, right? That would be so crazy. There's an element of art where we tie our soul 
and our body to the meaning of what we produce as a reflection of ourselves. And it's not that healthy. I see a lot of young artists do this and I do warn against it. Um, you got to kind of have that perspective to zoom out and go, hmm, I don't know if this is helping me right now or hurting me. And so regarding this whole idea, learning is not linear. It goes up and it comes down. And sometimes, pretty rarely, but it can happen, it can go backwards. You can get worse after you learn something. And a lot of people don't realize that that is a possibility, right? And yet I've seen it and I've experienced it for myself. It's like, oh my God, why can't I get this thing, right? And so you go crazy. So learning is about reps. It is about making mistakes. It is about allowing yourself to be terrible long enough to actually climb. And if we took a zoomed out profile of our learning curve, it would look like a linear progression. But if we zoomed in, we'd start to see the ups and downs of that learning curve. So that's what I wanted to say today is I hope you guys realize like learning is not linear. It is a pro progressive, it's a progressive um, endeavor towards an ideal. And that ideal takes time. So if you allow yourself the time and repetition, you'll get there. Okay, so number two is this idea that sometimes young artists lean too heavily on influencers and authorities out there um, and it can hurt them. And it comes in the form of something like, hey, I read somewhere or someone said something that makes me believe that I can't do something because of X, Y, Z. That is so crazy. That's like saying my brain stopped developing when I was 25. Therefore, I can't continue to learn and I can't learn new things. And it's going to be progressively harder for me to learn new things. So what's the point of learning new things? To me, that's nutty because I've learned more in my 30s than I have almost in my entire life combined. And that is not because of anything other than my own free will. It is my incredible desire to learn constantly about multiple things all the time that allows me to to sort of get an edge not only in my own field but in my own life all right so i want to be a better dad i want to be a better partner i want to be a good, better artist i want to be a better mentor to my mentees so i have to continuously learn and work on those things in order to improve and because i take those actions the improvement that you i see in my own life can sometimes be exponential right it can grow that fast so in my 30s, how is it possible that I'm able to do those things? Well, it's because of me trying them, right? Because I tried them, I have a stack of evidence. And so evidence almost always trumps someone's quote unquote facts, right? So if someone tells you, you can't run a 50 mile marathon in, you know, 12 hours, well, guess what? If you train a little bit and you just go for it, chances are, if you push hard enough, you'll be able to do it. So this is about paradigm shifting. This is about you realizing that you set your own standards and your own expectations in life. And if you decide to set them a certain way, that's the new standard for you, right? No one can challenge that because you're the one in control of yourself. So when we feel the instinct to outsource our decision making or our choices in life to other people, we're giving up the ability to think for ourselves and write our own destiny when it comes to even something like art. Right. So that's why I'm mentioning it here, because I sometimes see this kind of thing where people form these weird paradigms that come out of out of nowhere because someone that they're following said it. And this is why I said at the beginning of the video, you guys have to be careful about listening to people on the Internet. It's like even someone like me. Right. I might be spewing stuff right now that is super toxic or crazy and you should not be listening to it. Right. If I was to do that, you should not be listening to me. You should go and think for yourself and go, hmm, was Gabe right about that thing? Maybe I should challenge him about it. You know, maybe I should think for myself. Maybe I should go try what he said to try and find out if what he said was true, right? Without taking those steps, you run the risk of accepting at face value what someone says about your own life. And that is so dangerous, right? Because it can paralyze you. It can put you into a state of, well, what's the bloody point of trying if, if, if it's already been written in sand, right? <laughs> well, written in ink, sorry, not sand. Um, so uh, let's just jump in here. I want to talk a little bit about what I'm doing here. You guys saw that I just drew in a quick character and now I'm cleaning up that character and applying some design notes because the top left corner of my brief had a whole bunch of cyberpunk influence. So that's what I'm trying to get in here. 
Um, it had a bunch of notes about his character, his role, all those kind of things. Um, one thing I missed out on with this character was actually putting in some funky cyberpunk glasses. That might be something I could do a little bit later on, but just to let you know, right, I get so sucked into the process that sometimes I'll miss something in the brief. And with something like Just Draw, Just Paint, that's totally okay, right? We're not here to make the world's most perfect drawing, right? Uh, for you guys looking at me draw um, right now who are maybe a little bit newer to um, being an artist and, you know, aspiring uh, to be a better artist later on, you might be looking at some of the ways I draw here and being a little bit confused as to how the hell does he know how to draw that out of his head, right? Like the first pass I did on this character when there was just a silhouette there. Well, it's because I have visual library, right? I've spent a long time understanding how to draw these things. Therefore, like we covered in the first question of like, how do I hold on to previous knowledge? It's because I put the reps in, right? Because the reps are there, I know what certain things look like. I know how they should be positioned. I know how material reacts. So therefore, drawing out what I'm trying to draw out becomes so much easier, right? It's those reps that allow me to be at a certain level. And that's all it is, right? That's all it is. Like learning isn't a complex thing. It's just about putting the right foot in front of the right um, order, right? And then once you have that, you take tiny little steps every single day to improve and eventually you get good, right? That's the beauty of learning is that it's not a complicated process. You just put your mind to it and you go for it and you end up with pretty awesome results, right? So um, obviously I'm leaning quite heavily into my reference as well that I have on my other monitor, which always helps, right? Drawing without reference is just so difficult. I don't know why anyone would put themselves in that position. Uh, maybe you have an incredible visual library, but for me, I don't draw middle-aged scientists all the time. So I need a little bit of help, right? So that's what I do. I just go and grab that little bit of help and it takes me as far as this, right? So that's pretty cool. Uh, what else can we talk about here at the tail end of this recording? Well, I hope to do a bunch more of these for you guys to take a look at. Uh, they really are spur of the moment type things. I try not to look at what brief I'm going to be doing every single week um, because I don't want to over prepare and I also don't want to uh, burden myself with expectation right around this particular exercise. I just want to get into a state of, okay, cool. This is what I'm drawing for the next couple hours, right? And just get stuck in. So that's what you're seeing here. It's just kind of quite a spontaneous approach. Uh, there are obviously elements with this drawing that I'm not happy with, but I'm just finishing the drawing, right? It's not about perfection here. It's about just getting something out as a first pass on something. Like I said, this is very abnormal for my particular workflow. I much prefer to explore characters a little bit more before I jump into something like this. Um, but it's also a fun exercise. It's like, hey, what is your current skill level? Maybe this is a way to gauge it, right? You could do one of these every so often, um, although I would encourage you to do this kind of stuff every day, um, to just see where you're at with your drawing, right? Like what could you improve in? You could take notes after this and be like, I need to improve this. I need to improve that. And that could be a really cool way for you guys to progress with your drawing and your skills. So yeah, this drawing's almost done here. I've been working with it flipped for quite a while because that's a great way to balance out your original drawing. And I'll probably flip it back over uh, to the other side in a little while so that we can take a look at it in its final. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for watching this. I'm just going to drop in some value over the character from what we originally had, clean that up, put a basic shadow underneath and call it a day. So I hope you guys are having an epic end of the year and that you're starting to work on your goals for next year, your art goals specifically. Um, if you guys are interested, please hop on over to 101artschool.com and jump on our newsletter because we are doing some really awesome stuff with it. We are uh, writing articles every week uh, that are art oriented, uh, whether it's to do with this kind of subject matter that I'm mentioning today in the video or anything else. Uh, there's some really cool stuff happening in there and I'm quite proud of it. So hop on over. It's completely free. You can just get emailed every week and join up. Thanks.